Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. Glad to be here. Today we're diving into a pretty um, weighty question. Oh. Is generative AI actually irresponsible AI? Wow. Uh, that's a big one. It is. And we're basing this deep dive on a LinkedIn article by Jay Shaw. Okay. He's a quantum machine learning researcher. Interesting. And he really digs into this potential conflict between like creating super cool AI, mm. you know, right. and uh, the principles of responsible AI. Yeah. The AI that's supposed to be ethical and safe and trustworthy and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So our mission today is to figure out if the amazing things that generative AI can do are overshadowed by these like serious ethical concerns. All right, I'm ready to dive in. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. So think back to when you were first learning about AI. Maybe you were like me and you started with linear regression. Yeah, good old linear regression. Predicting housing prices, the classic example. Right. But AI has come a long way since then. Oh yeah, definitely. But that journey towards better AI, you know, meaning more complex and powerful AI, has come with a bit of a trade-off. I think that's a great point because Shaw actually illustrates this really well in his article. Oh, how so? He has this visual that shows just how much AI models have grown over the years. Oh, wow. We're talking exponentially larger and more complex than anything we've seen before. So bigger isn't always better in this case. Well, it depends because they can do some pretty amazing things, but the bigger they get, the less transparent they become. Okay, so we have these really powerful AI models that can do these incredible things, but we don't really understand how they work. Yeah, it's a little unnerving, right? Yeah, especially when we're starting to use them for like important things, not just fun little experiments. Exactly, and that lack of understanding that black box problem is a major concern when we talk about responsible AI. Yeah, how can we trust a system to make decisions, especially in like healthcare or finance, if we don't even know how it's reasoning. Right. It's like trusting a chef who throws a bunch of random ingredients into a pot and somehow produces an amazing dish. Okay, yeah. You might enjoy the meal, but you'd probably be a little hesitant to ask for the recipe. Yeah, that's a great analogy. It really highlights why explainability is so crucial for responsible AI. And Shaw argues that generative AI often falls short in this area. And I think he points to the financial pressures driving the field as a big contributing factor. Yeah, definitely. It's no secret that developing and running these huge AI models is expensive. Oh, yeah. So the companies working on generative AI are under a ton of pressure to attract investors and show a return on their investment. It can. And that can lead to cutting corners or prioritizing speed and performance over ethical considerations. Yeah, we saw a perfect example of this with all the drama surrounding open AI. Oh, yeah, for sure. The internal conflicts, the leadership changes. It really highlights the tension between profit and ethics in generative AI. Yeah, it was a wild ride to follow, for sure. Uh, it makes you wonder if the way we're defining better AI might be leading us down a path where responsible development takes a back seat. That's a great point. Uh, so it's not just about the black box problem either. Right. Shaw also points out some serious concerns about misuse, especially with image and video generation. Okay, so what does he say about that? Well, think about all the personal data that's out there online. Oh, yeah. A lot of it's publicly available. It is. So what happens when someone can use that data to create fake videos of us doing or saying anything they want? Oh, wow. We're already seeing the rise of deep fakes and generative AI could make this technology even more accessible. And dangerous. Exactly. It's like giving anyone with an internet connection the power to manipulate reality and spread misinformation. Exactly, and the current safeguards like credentials or watermarks, they might not be enough. Especially with things like single layer models and one bit quantization, right. making it possible to run these models on cheaper hardware. Right, it's getting easier and easier for people to create and distribute this AI generated content. Yeah, and their intentions might not always be good. Definitely something to think about. It is. So we've got these financial pressures, the black box problem, yeah. the potential for misuse. It's a lot. It's a lot to think about. Yeah. But let's move on to another ethical dilemma. Okay. The data itself. Right. These generative AI models are data hungry. They are. They need massive data sets to learn and generate content. And that raises some serious questions about how we collect use and protect data in this age of AI. Oh, absolutely. There are already lawsuits being filed over the use of public data 
to train AI models that then make money for companies. Yeah, it makes you question what's fair and who owns what. It does. And then there's the problem of bias and something called overfitting. Overfitting. What's that? It's when an AI model gets so good at the data it was trained on that it can't really handle new data. Oh, so like if you train an AI on all these pictures of cats. Right. It might not be able to recognize a dog. Exactly. It's not truly intelligent. It's just really good at mimicking what it's seen before. And that can lead to biased and inaccurate results. Especially when these AI systems are being used to make decisions that affect people's lives. Okay, so we've got all these concerns about financial pressures, mm. the black box problem, the potential for misuse, ethical dilemmas around data usage. Yeah. It's a lot to unpack. It is. And it makes you wonder if maybe the responsible AI of the past with its simpler, more transparent models had something valuable that we've lost sight of. Okay, so let's rewind the clock a bit and explore that idea. Sounds good. We'll do that right after this. Welcome back to our deep dive into generative AI. And if it's really as irresponsible as some people are saying. Right before the break, we were talking about some pretty big concerns. Yeah, the lack of transparency, the potential for misuse, you know, all that. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, we were about to go back in time a little bit. To the good old days. Well, to look at those white box models that Shaw mentioned. Right, the ones that were simpler and less powerful. But much easier to understand. Yeah, you could actually see how they made their decisions. So let's dig into that a bit. What made those models so different? Well, one big thing was transparency. Yeah. The algorithms and data they used to train those models were usually available for anyone to look at. So researchers and developers could see how the models were making decisions. Exactly. And that meant accountability, yep. something that's often missing in today's generative AI. So if a model was biased or made a mistake, you could trace it back and figure out why. Precisely like having an audit trail for every decision. That makes sense. Yeah. But weren't those models also limited in what they could do? That's true. They weren't as good at handling complex tasks like generating images or writing text. So was it a trade-off then? Did we sacrifice transparency and ethics for better results? That's the big question, isn't it? It's like we're at a crossroads in AI development. Yeah. Which path do we choose? Do we keep going with these powerful but opaque AI systems? Or do we go back and reconsider transparency and explainability, even if it means less power? It's like choosing between a fancy sports car that's a lot of fun to drive, but maybe a little dangerous, uh -huh. and a reliable old sedan that gets you where you need to go safely. I like that analogy. And I think Shaw is saying we might be too focused on the sports car right now. Yeah, we're so caught up in performance and novelty that we're forgetting about responsible development. Right. So how do we find that balance? How do we get AI that's both powerful and responsible? Well, Shaw thinks quantum computing could be a game changer. It's an interesting idea. OK, I'm intrigued, but I need you to break it down for me. How could quantum computing make AI more responsible? Okay, so remember that black box problem? Yeah. One of the reasons those generative AI models are so hard to understand is because of all the complex math they use. Right, all those layers of algorithms. It's like trying to read a secret code written in a language you don't know. Exactly. But quantum computing is different by its very nature. Okay, how so? It's more transparent. You can actually see how a quantum algorithm gets its results. So we could use quantum computing to create generative AI that's powerful and understandable. That's the hope. If we can use the principles of quantum computing to build AI systems, maybe we can get more transparency and accountability. That would be huge. It would. And it's not just about explainability. OK. Quantum computing could also make AI more efficient. Imagine training those huge AI models way faster and using less energy. So it's better for the environment, too. Exactly. A win-win. But we have to remember that quantum computing is still pretty new. Right. There's a lot of work to do before we can use it for AI on a large scale. So it's not a magic solution. No, but it's definitely worth exploring. And it's not the only option out there. Right. Shaw also mentions other approaches to AI that could help make it more responsible. Like what? He doesn't go into detail in this article, but there's a lot of research happening in things like neurosymbolic AI and evolutionary computation. Those sound pretty complex. They are. But the idea is to look at fields like biology and cognitive science for inspiration. So instead of just copying how humans think? We're trying to understand how our brains actually work and use that to create better AI. That's fascinating. So we're trying to find new ways to think about AI. Yeah. Break free from the old ways and explore new possibilities. That's where things get really interesting. We're on the edge of a whole new era of AI. 
And we have a chance to shape it in a way that prioritizes both capability and responsibility. It's a big challenge, but an exciting one. I'm optimistic. I think if we keep talking about these issues and working together, we can create a future where AI is a force for good. I like that outlook. So listeners, as we move forward with generative AI and all these new technologies, let's remember that we have choices to make. The future isn't set in stone. We can't just sit back and watch it happen. We need to be involved and ask the tough questions about how we want AI to be used. And those questions aren't just for the experts. They're for everyone. Whether you're a student or an artist or just someone who's curious about the world around them, we all have a stake in this. Because the decisions we make about AI will affect all of us. So let's go into this new era of AI with open eyes. Let's embrace the potential, but also be aware of the risks. Let's challenge assumptions and demand transparency. And never stop asking that important question. Is this responsible? Because the future of AI is up to all of us. Well said. So responsible AI development has to happen on multiple levels. Absolutely. We need to think about responsible data collection, responsible model building, and responsible deployment. It seems like every advancement in AI brings a new set of ethical questions. It does. But that's how progress works. It's not about being afraid of the future. It's about approaching it thoughtfully. We need to be ready to adapt as we learn more. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the main takeaway for our listeners? I think the most important thing to remember is that the future of AI is not set in stone. It's not something that's just going to happen to us. Exactly. We're shaping the future of AI with the choices we make. So we can't just sit back and watch. We have to be engaged and ask the tough questions about how we want AI to be used in our lives. And those questions are for everyone, not just the experts. Right. Everyone has a stake in this. Whether you're a student, a business owner, or just a concerned citizen, the decisions we make about AI will impact all of us. So as we enter this new era of AI with generative models and maybe even quantum computing, let's do it with our eyes wide open. Let's embrace the possibilities, but also be aware of the risks. Let's challenge assumptions and demand transparency. And most importantly, let's keep asking that crucial question. Is this responsible? Because ultimately, the future of AI is a shared responsibility. It's up to all of us to make sure that these powerful technologies are used for good. Well said. That's all the time we have for today. But thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of generative AI and the quest for responsible development. It's been a pleasure. We hope you learn something new and that you'll keep thinking about these important issues. And remember, the future of AI is something we create together. Until next time, stay curious and stay engaged.